Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew coming to you from beautiful Costa Rica. Tonight's topic is going to be anxiety in the narcissistic relationship. Think about that for a minute. If you like the content, please subscribe. Guys, so what is anxiety? Anxiety is a feeling that we all go through. It's emotion we all feel that uh, it, it, it's an, an uneasiness. It's when you are, you're nervous or you're anxious, you're, you're not feeling you're, you're unrestful. Like, in other words, maybe you have an exam in college and you have to take that exam and you, you know you didn't study, so you're like, you're anxious about it. Like, oh my gosh, am I gonna do well? Or you go on that first date and you're like, oh my gosh, is this gonna be a good date? Or first day on the job, things like that. In the narcissistic relationship, post love bomb, that is, and the love bomb, don't forget, it's not exclusive to the romantic relationship. It's in the workplace, neighbors, churches, family members, everything, it, it, that's how it works. But post when that uh, euphoric stage is over, let's say, the newness of the relationship, um, that's when anxiety kicks in many times. And I'm not trying to trigger anybody whatsoever. I'm expressing my opinions, and I'm certain many of you resonate with this. And if you do, please drop comments below. But anxiety in the narcissistic relationship, it's, it's everywhere. It's insidious, it's prevalent. And I will give you many examples of this right now. Like, watch this one. When you were in the narcissistic relationship, Let's say you had a boss and they told, they promised you, you know, X, Y, and Z, like the corner office, the, the payroll, the, the pay grade or upgrade and all these things, if you did this one job. And the job was, the duration of the job was to be six months. And you accomplished it. And all of a sudden you get in the boss's office, you're like, all right, well, I did it. I brought an extra 45% profits to the company. I'm ready for my corner office and my promotion. And he's like, what are you talking about? I never got that. Yes, that's future faking. Yes, that's gaslighting but it immediately makes you anxious. You're like, what are you, like, I don't get this. Like, what? And you went in that office feeling all confident and comfortable, and this person who turned out to be a narcissist, as an example, they're, they're like, no, uh, I don't know what you mean. And of course, like I said, it's gaslighting, it's future faking, but it's also anxiety. Because now in the workplace, when are you excited to go to work? No, you're not feeling good about it at all because you were just thrown under the bus. That's one example. Another example of anxiety in the narcissistic relationship is, let's say you had to pick somebody up who turned out to be the narcissist and say you had to pick them up at four o'clock. Well, were you there at four o'clock? No, you are probably there at like 3.40, waiting, doing nothing, wasting your time, which I don't like to use that word, but that's what you did, because you didn't want to be late. Why? Because if you were late, anxiety would kick in and the narcissist would punish you for being late. Now keep in mind, when you're early, what do you do? You do waste your time, and the narcissist loves that because they control you, and you get anxiety again because you're saying to yourself, why am I wasting so much time? You see, the narcissist puts you in a lose-lose position, more so than ever throughout the relationship, throughout the duration of the relationship. They push your boundaries, they crush your soul, they decimate your spirit, and all they do is take, take, take. And this relationship is full of anxiety. Another example, you go on vacation, and you're all excited, you plan the vacation. Are you really looking forward to go to the vacation? Maybe, but you're anxious because you know it, the vacation is a ticking time bomb. It's gonna blow up one, two, three days during the vacation. Maybe you got the wrong airline seats on the airplane. Maybe your hotel room isn't a corner hotel room. Maybe the, the, the dinner wasn't you know lobster and caviar, and instead it was filet mignon and some, something else, and scallops. The point is, the narcissist is never satisfied. And on vacations, as I've mentioned many times before, and holidays and birthdays and all these things, they blow up everything. So there's anxiety surrounded each and every major date of the year, calendar year, like any holiday, birthday, vacation, like I'm, doing, like I'm mentioning. Other ways that, that you are anxious or you experience anxiety in the narcissistic relationship is the legendary cell phone. That's right. You, when you're in the narcissistic relationship, you would sit by the cell phone Sincerely waiting for the text from the narcissist. Now, maybe you didn't do it like it wasn't sitting like when you were 16 years old in high school waiting for you know, that phone to ring on, on a special date, but it was kind of like that. And the reason why is because you were groomed, and if you did not reply to the narcissist quick enough, they would hammer you, or they would gaslight you, or stonewall you, or invalidate you, or, or blow up your phone because they wanted to control you, and this would give you anxiety again. Keep in mind, when you were experiencing all this anxiousness or all the anxiety during the relationship, you were walking on high alert. You were walking around on eggshells, which again is what? It's anxiety. Living through an anxiety period of time, anxiety-filled period of time is not healthy. It's completely not healthy. 
And if you experience anxiety for any period of, like, let's say that the exam in college, you have an exam tomorrow and you didn't study and you should have and you know it, you, you know it. Okay, well, you're anxious. Or maybe you did study and you're still anxious, it's fine. The point is that that's a brief period of anxiety, of anxiousness, and it comes and it goes until you get the grade and you're like, okay, I passed, thank goodness. I'll study harder next time or I got the A, I deserve it, whatever. But when you're in a narcissistic relationship, you're on high alert 24 seven, including when you sleep. Yes, because you're afraid of anything at any moment. Remember, the narcissist likes drama, chaos, manipulation, confusion, the fog. They like little circles and secrets of friends. That's exactly what they do. They don't tell the truth. They're not upfront, honest, kind, good loving people. They're anxiety riddled people. And it's never more evident than if you really dig into what I'm mentioning. Their anxiousness, their anxiety rubs off on you when you're in the toxic relationship. Why? Because you can't just sit down and just be. They, the narcissist always has to be doing something on one of their cell phones or contacting someone or on social media or moving around or claiming they have to go to the store at 10 o'clock at night even though whatever they want to get, it doesn't, they don't need it for four more days. The point is they're always on the go. Doing what, you ask? Of course, looking for sources of supply because they get anxious if they don't get the supply they want and they know this. This is a weakness of the narcissist. It's a weakness they don't want you to know about. They don't want you to know that they're anxious and that they're little kids inside. Nothing against little kids, but you get my point. They just can't be healthy adults. They can't have healthy relationships because anything that's going too good, any relationship-wise with a narcissist, it's destined to blow up. By whom? That's right, the narcissist, because they can't help themselves, because they're anxious, anxiety-riddled, and they need to leapfrog from person to person, country to country, town to town, city to city, job to job, manipulating people, unsuspecting people that have no idea that they are a narcissist. It's what they do, it's their nature. Now, having said all these things, you most likely experienced anxiety on a minimal scale, or maybe you know you, you, you had higher anxiety throughout life. I understand, I empathize with that. But if you were in a toxic narcissistic relationship for any period of time, I can promise you that was amplified. It was through the roof, because you couldn't just decompress and be yourself when you were around this person. You had to be on high alert, always waiting for the next shoe to drop, waiting for the next problem to happen, waiting for the next, uh, the, the mask to slip. In other words, remember, with the narcissist, you could wake up in the morning and they could be in a great mood. And you're like, oh my gosh, it's gonna be a good day. This is fantastic, I'm so excited. And then by 12 o'clock, boom, you're being blamed for a thousand things that had nothing to do with you. Why? Because the narcissist didn't get supply from their other sources and they needed to blame you. Or maybe they were super anxious and they took it out in a rage fit with you. There are thousands, hundreds of thousands of things that are possibilities with the narcissistic relationship. But anxiety is one of them. And for healthier people that don't experience anxiety on a regular basis, and it's nothing against the people that do experience anxiety, I, I get it, it's not fun. We all have our crosses to carry, our burdens to carry, I get it. But for people that don't experience anxiety on a regular basis, and once you're cast into a narcissistic relationship, it's like oil and water. You cannot figure out for the life of you why you're feeling the way you're feeling, why you're always uneasy, why when the front door opens, you're like, oh my God, what's it gonna be today? I don't know. Or when you hear that car pull in the garage, you're like, what is this? Like, I don't know, what, what, am I gonna get Dr. Jekyll or Mr. Hyde? That's anxiety. It's not the way to be living. It's not even, think about it this way. You're in the jungle, okay? And you're walking, you're just, you're walking in the jungle on vacation, whatever, just, still, just stay with me here. And everything's fine and you're calm, everything's good, you're sightseeing or whatever you're doing, and then lo and behold, there's a huge tiger like 50 yards in front of you. That's fight or flight, right? That's like, oh my God, what am I gonna do? I, I, uh. Okay, that's anxiety. That's get the heck out of there as fast as you can. That's how you feel in a narcissistic relationship virtually every day of your life because you never get support, you never get confidence, you never get comfort, you're never listened to. What you are is a human punching bag someone that's gonna be bullied for the duration of the relationship. It's just the way it works. And I'm not saying anything, I'm not giving the narcissist a free pass, Are you kidding me? They're disgusting and vile. They blow up marriages, blow up families, blow up sibling relationships, blow up friendships, blow up people at the workplace. They can't help themselves, it's what they do. That's why there's no stability with a narcissist. There never has been, there never will be. So having said that, if you've experienced anxiety in the narcissistic relationship, that's, that's part of it. It's a huge red flag. And for those of you who right now maybe are entering a new relationship, maybe a new love or a new friendship or you're moving or whatever you're doing, pay attention to what I'm about to tell you. If, if the people you're surrounding yourself with or the people that you're spending time with, if you're not quite feeling right about them 
like your instincts are telling you something's wrong or maybe you're, at, you're feeling uneasy, which is a symptom of anxiety, I strongly suggest you picture them as that lion in the jungle and get out of there. You don't need to surround yourself with people that don't fulfill you, that don't make you feel good about yourself, that don't build you up. And if you're feeling anxiety, like I said, on that college test, it's natural, that's fine, it happens. Or if you move or change jobs or you know, you're going back dating for the first time in a while, I get it, it's human nature, it's beautiful, that, that's, that's healthy. But if you're experiencing anxiety on each and every day of your life for a period of time, that's not good. You're walking around on high alert and you cannot be yourself. You can't just let yourself be. You can't decompress because you don't know what the next drama event is gonna be. You don't know what you're gonna be thrown under the bus for next. You don't know how to react because you're subservient to the narcissist because if you stand up for yourself, the narcissist will completely crush you. Now, again, in any narcissistic relationship, you're damned if you do, you're damned if you don't. It's just the way it is. That's why on this channel, I suggest strongly eradicate, get rid of every narcissist in your life. Go no contact, block, delete, remove flying monkeys and anybody associated with the narcissist. That's the path, that's what you must do. That's the only way you can release the pressure, the toxic energy that surrounds you. I hope you guys get the message. Guys, I, liked, I hope you liked the video. I loved doing it from beautiful Costa Rica. This is Andrew, namaste. Have a great evening, stay blessed, stay true, stay on the path, continue to become awakened and aware and understand anxiety is not a good thing. If you experience it here and there, I get it. If you have you know, stronger issues with it, like, like you have real problems with it, not including the narcissistic relationship, my heart goes out to you. I empathize with you completely. My hope is you're handling that well. But in a toxic narcissistic relationship, if you are experiencing this, I really suggest you remove yourself from the relationship, get out, save yourself, do the best thing for you because the narcissist won't. They want you around as a punching bag. They want you around to abuse, use, manipulate, control. That's what they do. So my hope is, like I said, that no matter where you are on the planet, you understand that if you're experiencing this, you can find a solution and you can better your life. Guys, no matter where you are on the planet, you are on the planet, you're loved, you're beautiful. Remember, you're not alone. God bless you. Have a great evening and I will talk to you tomorrow. I love you. Good night.